Welcome back friends. Uh, in this video tutorial we'll be talking about transgenes and transgenic mice and how we produce transgenic mice. So what is transgene actually? Transgene means simply we have a, let's say we have a particular gene of our interest which codes for a particular protein the expression of which which is known for us sometimes unknown for us we want to see the expression of a particular gene in a living organism for example in the living mice in that case we need to inject that gene inside another mice to see the effect right so as we take our desired gene, let's say this is the gene of interest with this red color in middle and we have other, other constructs So because it's a, it is a vector uh, which is a gene delivery system. So we'll take that gene and insert it inside a mouse. That is called the transgenic mice production because once we take our gene from outside uh, inside a vector or the gene delivery system and we deliver it inside uh, uh, in vivo system like uh, organism like mouse or rabbit in that case that thing is called as a transgenic uh, system and that's called the transgenic uh, mice or transgenic uh, rabbit whatever we produce so in this case this this mouse over here will be called as a transgenic mouse because we transferred a gene from outside inside this mouse so how can we do that uh, for the general process of this uh, we need to have an embryo because uh, the embryo which is fertilized for fertilized oocyte for example here uh, it carries all the potential to develop into a mouse right so what we do we actually take the gene of our interest which is here in this one and we inject this gene which is obviously incorporated in vectors so we take that vector with uh, the gene of interest and inject it inside the fertilized oocyte which is denoted here with this round this is the in site and we take the injection that's called the micro injection and we inject the gene of interest inside that oocyte so once we do that after that what we happens it will transfer that mouse so we take that oocyte containing the gene of interest carrying vector and then we place it into another mice that's called the recipient mother mouse in this case generally it's a foster mother so it's called the recipient mother so once inserting it into the recipient mother we we look for the progeny and the progeny among the progeny uh, some of the mouse are going to get that gene and those will be called as the transgenic mice some of them are not going to get that gene and they'll be called as non-transgenic mice so this is the overview of how we produce transgenic mouse so now let's look at the much more detailed stages over here so if you look at here in this particular case we can actually divide uh, the production of transgenic mice in two different sections one is called as uh, the initial phase and the insertion of gene of interest inside the embryo and the second phase is called as uh, the development of the transgenic mouse so if you look at here this is the left hand side this is the first section and in this one is the incorporation of uh, the gene the transgene transgene means the gene which is incorporating from outside inside the organism so what we need to do in this case we we need to produce a vector that vector will contain the gene of our interest for example here if you look at here this is a vector it can be a plasmid or it can be if, if the gene of interest is larger we need to take vectors like yeast artificial chromosome or yak or bacterial artificial chromosome so we take it let's say the yeast artificial chromosome and we insert the gene of interest in this case denoted with this red colored segment into that vector we clone it this is called the molecular cloning that is the very first stage once the cloning is done we have the gene incorporated to the vector which is the delivery system because we cannot directly insert this gene uh, we can insert this gene directly also but this is one of the process of doing it now once this is done then what we do we need to also take uh, the fertilized oocyte now uh, for that what we need we need to have the embryo donor and we not only need the female we need the male also because we should have uh, we should carry that that, uh, that fertilization process there between this embryo donor parent mice as you can see here these are the parent mice of embryo donor and after the fertilization between them what we get we get uh, the embryo in that embryo there are different sections of the embryo and one is called the inner cell mass another one is the outer cell mass so what we look for here is the inner cell mass because the inner cell mass contains a lot of cells which are called embryonic stem cells or ES cells they 
are very very important and these cells are totipotent in nature that means these cells can give rise to different all the different type of cells of the body like this embryonic stem cells can produce uh, nerve cells this embryonic stem cells can also produce liver cells so they have uh, they are very much versatile here so we take some of these inner mast cells and put it into the cell culture why because we want a lot of same type of cells during the cell culture and during the cell culture process we select certain cells we produce the cell line with a particular type of embryonic stem cells so once we get that cell line in our hand we take that es or in the embryonic stem, stem cells out of that plate of the cell culture plate and then we inject this vector the clone vector inside that embryonic stem cell now this injection or delivery of our desired gene inside the embryonic stem cell may occur in three different possibilities and we are going to see those three possibilities here uh, in little later but in this case this is very very important so let's look at here how this process actually work here so this is how the DNA is injected there. So if you look at here, this is let's say the, the gene of our interest. Uh, let's say this is the gene of our interest in these curvy lines. And we have the vector which is called YAC or yeast artificial chromosome. Now uh, what we do actually, we insert this inside a yeast cell. So we have a yeast clone. Now what are the ways that we need to inject this DNA of interest inside the the embryonic stem cells. So one way is the spheroplast fusion. In the spheroplast fusion what happens we have this embryonic stem cells which is here brown in color and we fuse it with the yeast clone so that those gene is inserted inside the ES. Second way is the lipofection or simple micropore injection or uh, not injection actually in this case uh, it can be lipofection or, or uh, the electric current that is uh, provided to the cell membrane of embryonic stem cells which changes the voltage and also uh, creates pore in the cell membrane, creates pore by, by separating all those uh, phospholipids so that it creates a channel through that channel uh, that gene of interest can insert inside the Yes. Now the third way is the micro injection system. The micro injection system is you have also the, the cell, the fertilized oocyte and inside the fertilized oocyte we just inject the desired gene there, the desired gene with the, with the vector. In that case you don't need the complete yeast clone, it, instead we just require the purified yeast artificial chromosome. But remember in spheroplast fusion we need the ES cell as well as the yeast clone because we need to fuse two types of cells together uh, they require this uh, cellular cell membrane uh, to have fusion but other two process like lipofection, microporation or microinjection techniques we only need the vector containing the gene of interest and we inject it into the fertilized oocyte here and then we implant it into the cell, into the organism so if we, if we go back here so once that process is done here after that the second phase starts and the second phase is to deliver that cloned cell that deliver the embryonic stem cells inside another embryo and then implant that embryo to the carrier uh, or recipient organism or the recipient mouse to develop into uh, the proper progeny mouse containing the desired gene of interest. So here we have the embryo host parent again uh, and they produce this uh, this fertilized kind of kind of embryo. So once we have that embryo then what we do after getting all this cloned uh, vector inside uh, the embryonic cell we again uh, go for several rounds of cell division in cell culture lab. So after that among different cells as you can see there will be some cells which are the recipient of the vector and also there are some cells which won't get any uh, vector containing the recipient at all. So in that case we need to select only the cells containing the desired gene with the vector. So let's say these are the cells so as you can see here these are the cells. So we take that cells and then put it inside the again the inner cell mass area of the new embryonic stem cells of the host embryo. So we inject it there. So once we inject that 
because why we do all this cell culturing thing the idea here is to produce uh, the the nature that all the cells that are present there should have the proper nature the all the cells that will be placed there they have the potential to grow and develop and they all have the desired gene uh, with the clone vector inside so that is very very important so once once that thing is done then we inject it inside the inside the embryonic stem cell inside the inner mass area of the embryonic stem cell and then what we do as you can see here the new new embryonic stem cells are designated with the red coloration right so after that the stage will be like this so we have this uh, mouse now this is the 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 recipient mouse so we need to inject all those embryos remember these red things are not only means embryonic stem cells but in, in, instead we take all the embryo and we inject those embryos inside the uterus of the recipient mouse once we inject that they will provide the offspring the progeny and if you look at the progeny here they are chimeric in nature that means in this case though this mouse is uh, white in color but we take it from the brown mouse in that case for example so all of them kind of have some of the cells of, of the of the progeny mouse's body contain the transgene some of the cells are not containing the transgene but what we require here we need to produce transgenic mice which are completely transgenic that means which are transgenic for homo homologous so homologous transgenic mice uh, homogeneous i mean transgenic mice not it should not be uh, the heterozygous it should be homozygous uh, transgenic mice right sorry i i told the homologous actually it's homozygous transgenic mice we all know what's homozygous what heterozygous is so once we have this progeny mice we take one of this progeny mice and we cross it with another mice from the system which is wild type from the system to find out exactly uh, whether our embryo is implanted or not now after this cross what we can have we can have one of the heterozygous mice produced now the heterozygous mice as you can see here is in brown in color here so we got this heterozygous mice here so if I take an ink here so as you can see here that due to the cross between these two it produces this heterozygous mice so once we produce this heterozygous mice we cross this heterozygous mouse with another heterozygous mouse and again this is another simple cross so another cross will take place and then after this cross between two heterozygous mouse what we can expect now using the common idea of Mendelian genetics we know if two heterozygous organisms are crossed there is a possibility of developing a homozygous right so in that case what we do actually it generates three different possibilities one is the possibility of producing homozygous wild type mouse and that the possibility is 25 percent second possibility is homozygous transgenic mouse and also the possibility is 25 percent and the maximum chances of producing is a heterozygous transgenic mouse and that is a 50 percent so if you look at here what we require among all these three different types of mouse we require the homozygous transgenic mouse because this homozygous transgenic mouse contains all the desired all the different uh, genes I mean all our desired gene in different cells of, of, of inside their body so that's why it's very very important to only get this homozygous transgenic mice and the percent is 25 percent only so that's how we produce the transgenic mice now if we look at the genetics of how this transgene is incorporated inside the vector if we look at here this is this will be very clear that this is the vector for interest let's say this is the vector and this vector as you can see it contains a particular allele let's say the allele is the a star here and it also contains a neomycin resistance gene and also different other sections of recombination sites here the which is denoted here in this blue color section which are also called as re regions or regions of homology because they have the homologous section between them so the idea here is we ha also have the original allele that is uh, a in red color so there will be exchange of the genetic segment between them so there will be two different types of producing the transgene here one is that if there is a recombination take place between this vector and this uh, and this desired gene of interest here so due to the homologous recombination between these uh, blue sections or blue segment of the genome this uh, this a star will be replacing the a right so the a is the actual original allele we need to replace for example it will be replaced with this a star right so if you need to do a knockout 
this could be done this is the process of gene knockout actually we, where we actually uh, block or delete the activity of a particular gene with the help of insertion with another gene now if you look at the insertion actually we can also take care of this random insertion so where we have the gene of interest here uh, I mean the vector uh, vector and our desired gene and we insert the gene for the vector that is neomycin resistance that TK or A star genes inserted inside the desired gene so in both the way they can be inserted and what that can do they can actually change the different properties of that organism right so for example if the strain after this random gene insertion it can be killed by gancyclovir which is a drug on the other hand if a, if the first thing happens like like the replacement is happen in this first case they that particular cell will be resistant to both gang cyclovir as well as g418 so this is how this is a kind of example of how this process works and i hope that's helpful if you like the video please subscribe share the video hit the like button and thank you